keep saying Hi there Jeremy. and welcome to it. I'll, se- I'll send you the meme. When anyone says anything filthy I mean, or rude, just... there's a meme you put. Uh, oh, right. I don't need to listen I... to it, do I? No, that's what? not I, a meme. You can't listen. You can't Carry hear on. memes, Sam. James, oh, for right. fuck's sake, what? hurry up. When you I get on with it. Christ! What I, what I, what I, what I like about this is, is that people might think this is, I don't know, deliberate. Just as, as like a bit, but it re- it really isn't. No. Every time I try and start anything with you two, you just Dude. you just go. It's it's almost like you'll be quiet. You'll be quiet for thirty seconds, and then the second I need to do something, oh, all of a sudden it all comes out. Sam's never been quiet for thirty Welcome. seconds. Fucking Jesus Christ! <laughs> Welcome to episode one hundred and twenty-one of the ADHD Adults Podcast. I am James Brown. The man whose mood is so low, so often it could be an Olympic level limbo dancer. And I'm joined by an Olympic level shooter, Dr. Alex Connor, and the woman with the strength of an Olympic level powerlifter, Mrs. ADHD. Alex, hi. Olympic level shooter makes me sound like a proper Lothario. Yeah, thank you. Thank thank you. Star. <laughs> yeah. And um, fucking hell, I'm sure there's lots missing from the script. It's Sam, also hi. Oh, you'll have to have the script guy for that. Hello, Alex. <laughs> Alex. Yes, that's it. Is it Are just, you going to do your hello? bit? Yeah, a reminder no. that we started. The bit no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. I was that that pause, Sam. That pause was was literally half a second. My word, your ADHD is it's strong. Half a second too long. Um, yeah, thank you. Yes, a reminder that we started the podcast because we, all we ever wanted was to get shortlisted for the National Diversity Awards, <laughs> uh, uh, but it wasn't the podcast that has it's the charity. And we also wanted yeah. to confusingly be forced into splitting the charity from the podcast because we're so wildly unprofessional on the podcast that it, it, it has to be a private enterprise. So if you're confused by that, just ask Sam. She definitely knows the rules and we don't. I do. Now yeah, we've got time for another one everyone. because, oh God, we're tired. That's why. James? Okay. So this, people who say, but Robin Williams seems so happy, I don't understand it, of a podcast, is also a tragedy yes. in three parts. We'll discuss how the theme of the week between podcasts has been from our perspective as people with ADHD and people involved in the ADHD community as well as answering some questions that you've sent in for us and talking a little bit more about this week's theme which was ADHD and PMDD so as always I'll ask you to how your week was and in the past nobody would ask me about Sam will forget and then ask me so Sam how was your week? I think mixed I can't really remember a lot of it I am um... I went to a, a an event, a, like a work event, and they had us do this like speed dating thing where we could meet other people. And obviously I'm really social awkward and I don't really like what? meeting people for the first time. So I was fucking terrified. But I met somebody that I thought was going to be my new best friend. And she said, I'll I'll email you and we'll have lunch. She's not contacting me and I'm really upset. I kept speaking to her in the toilets and then finally got to speak to her at this thing. And she was like, oh, it's you. And I thought we were really, I actually told two people, her included, that had ADHD and was autistic. And they they just accepted it like it was nothing. And she seemed to really like me and we were going to go for coffee, but then she's never messaged me. So I thought, I love her. And I thought we were going to be best friends and, and we're not. As I said in fr- Monday's podcast, I had my GP appointment. Finally, I managed, I, I put my phone on ring and everything. Um, and yeah, so I have now been handed back to my GP. The GP, the GP has signed the shared care agreement and immediately yes. prescribed medication for me. And I, I've got it on repeat. So that's all amazing. Skeletal turned up. So as you know, I do not cope with change or surprises <laughs> or anything unexpected happening in my life whatsoever. I have to know exactly what is going to happen at all times. And people know not to just call around to my house, but Skeletal, who I adore, she's my longest friend. I've been friends with her since school. She's How wonderful. Long is she? She's not that long, actually. <laughs> Not very ironic. <laughs> yeah, she's very, very short. 
uh, even shorter than me. And she turned up un unannounced, unexpectedly. And I felt like, how can I describe it? Like every molecule in my body was shaking and panicking. I felt like I couldn't breathe. And, it, it, you know, it was a lovely surprise. I genuinely I know, love I her and, and really pleased to see her, but could not cope with it at all to the point. I would hate like, every second I'm of so that. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And, and, I, I, and I was like, why would you do this to me? You know, I don't anyway and um yeah so that was that was difficult and and i actually said to her listen because she was getting upset that she i didn't want her to be there and i said i've got to explain yeah. to you you know i've been referred for autism diagnosis and she went do you need any witness statements because <laughs> she's been friends with me since school and i said you know the likelihood is that i don't want to diagnose you here but you might be also do you not remember when we were in college together and we used to hide behind the lockers where it was quiet because the common room was too loud for us. And I'd bring some hot chocolate that I'd made at home in a flask and we'd make up like our own language and our own songs and stuff. She's very similar to me. Anyway, a bee chased me repeatedly. Good, it was lovely. It was just too much in the in the common room for me. The, the same bee? Yeah, so I accidentally sprayed it when I was spraying my flowers. Like, I didn't mean to, obviously. And it came after me, yeah, and was like... <laughs> so I ran in the house, and I just threw everything and ran in the house, and I waited a while until it had gone. And then I came back out, started watering again. It wasn't there. And then it came back and was like... <laughs> so I threw That's everything so and I ran back in. Sound sensory issues. Just, you do some remarks. Yeah, can I just... Can I, can, I, can, I just, can I just remind you, Sam, that the tech guy sometimes struggles to normalise the volume of the podcast when you scream into the microphone. I don't want to make Sorry. you feel shame because I you're do. telling a lovely story. No, and, and I'm sure boring. you do. But yes. <laughs> <A> lovely story. <laughs> anyway, yes. he was very angry and he kept he? hiding. I'm presuming it's a, he kept hiding and, and waiting until I was comfortable watering again. And then he'd come out again. And it was it was just a bit of a nightmare. Um, yeah. And obviously we put the I, I spent ages writing a statement for like social media and then got James to help me put it out in the end. And I was I was so scared about putting it out that I was physically shaking. I was really scared about it. And then the response has just been so overwhelmingly positive it was just making me cry the whole time people saying well you know of course you can't continue to fund the podcast yourselves you know because James bought all the equipment for us and, and has been funding it every week and they're like of course you can't continue to do that and of course you deserve to be like you know have your time paid for and yes we do want more content and we do want James and Alex to be able to do it so if you can block out time in the diaries eventually from this it's brilliant and the podcast the it, the response was just so overwhelmingly positive oh god it's making me feel faint just thinking about it it's weird isn't oh, it like experiencing positivity <laughs> yeah yeah it's really weird i, I, I feel like I really spaced <clears throat> out i think it's probably Shaky. the lack of oxygen from not taking a breath for the last five minutes <laughs> if anything <laughs> james how's your week been oh, oh i mean yeah i know she uh, just uh, we have to just accept now that, that happens I, I'm going to talk in very vague and abstract terms now because there's, there are things I can't talk about. But the Robin Williams comment earlier is something I want to talk about mental health in general. That we have mm. this view, some of us, that men, if you have mental health issues, if you're not sat in a dark room harming yourself, then you're fine, you're normal, you're happy. If you're talking to people, if you're going out to the shops, if you're doing some of the things that you know making people jokes. do during life exactly making jokes the robin williams thing Rob, the robin williams thing keith flint from the prodigy um like, oh mm. god the singer like forget his name from uh, one of the other bands what a brilliant description james for fuck's sake it always happens that when these people end their lives that people say oh i had no idea they were depressed or Oh, you know, but they seemed really happy. I mean, Robin Williams, he was he was so funny. He entertained people. He seemed mm -hmm. so happy. Well, yeah, no shit. People who have mental health issues often, unlike me, who does share it with everyone, don't go around saying, I've got a really, I'm in a mental health crisis. I'm thinking constantly, you know, the, the darkest of thoughts. And then when somebody, I'm not obviously going to say here, but when somebody challenges you by saying you're, you're not mentally ill you're not struggling because 
of things like making a joke, going out and doing apologize things. Apologise for that, James. It was an off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs> it really, it was Alex. I, I took it in the context for which it was meant. It, it just, it. Again, oh, I know how this feels. Imagine how that feels when you're in that place when you're really struggling, and then someone says, "Well, you know, it's possible that you're not struggling actually because you know you're breathing and." And it's the things. thing you think yourself as well, don't you? you feel like a fraud. You yeah. feel yeah. like, oh, yeah. actually, I'm just shit. I shouldn't yeah. even, I don't even deserve to be sad. And and if somebody tells you yeah. that, it's it's what you're expecting to hear. It anyway. is. And it what is. people don't right, realise, right. with, you, with you and the Robin William things, I'm so sorry to interrupt, um, but you mm. do these things because you want to help other people because you don't want other people to be feeling the way that you are feeling. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and Robin Williams tried to, to make people laugh and you can't do that but you know you do your own thing to help other people <laughs> but you know you you get some self-worth from a bloody good people. go though doesn't he it was hey, yeah, yeah he, he does tries. He, he does tries. he tries his best yeah i do too hard do. And considering actually, the outcome anyway carry on james sorry yeah it's an inappropriate amount of effort for a very diminishing level of returns I, yeah. for the last couple of little talks I've done, I've actually stood at the start. I'm in oh. a really bad place at the minute and I would have cancelled, I would have cancelled this, but the fear of letting, that. they really would, the fear of letting people down, people with ADHD and just the response was overwhelmingly positive and lots of love from people. And, and that, you know, there are clearly, most people do have empathy. Some people don't. On top of that, this is the beauty. Um, <laughs> one of the beauties of, of stress I, I don't know if you're aware of this you guys probably are because I've told you but I have at the minute something called dyshydrosis and when I get very stressed I get little fluid filled blisters on my fingers which obviously because I've got body focused repetitive behaviors I can't leave those fuckers alone so I bite them off and I've now just got open sores on my fingers which means I can't kind of put my hands into even water can't do the washing up for example you know because this just the pain the stinging pain from putting my hands in water sure it just hasn't accidentally accidentally been blessed by a priest it might be that <laughs> <laughs> just but it got, got me sent to that that would that would that is that is that most, is good that is a good one um, yes exactly and but we're not most people are we, we are um not. you know on top of that though, i've loved creating the new content we've been doing i've loved trying to set up the merch website um yeah it's been it's been interesting but in a really shit place but at the same time having things to focus on which helps with being in a shit place what about you alex um something terrible happened and i'm building up to a joke something genuinely one of the worst things happened to me in my life this week which is i had to ask james for some advice and his advice helped <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh it still does Still does, and I feel oh, like a know, real just, weight still because I acted on it. So Texted you this morning, didn't so I, James, from the forest? Yeah, saying, so hey, I do listen to you sometimes. You knobhead. Yeah, so thank, <laughs> thank you, James. Um, this, the six week ADHD course I'm doing, which is like James's little online talks, but bigger, better, and impactful, more like better. Sam's thing <laughs> she does. <laughs> you know what? I've been massively me. shocked by. Normally, when I'm doing teaching towards the end, and this is a six week thing, towards the end of it, I, I, I really need to stop. And it's the, it's the last one next week, and I'm sad about it. And I'm trying to think, how do I, how do I make sure this group of people, we can stay in contact? And oh. it's bonk. It's really, really bonk. And one of them is, is Mercy, who, who's uh, one of our, one yeah, of our yeah. uh, Discord, Discord peeps. And I think I'm allowed to say, no, I am allowed to say. And yeah, of course, really she's a volunteer for the charity. I've put a picture up on the on the exactly. Website. Yes, I, I, I will, again, I, I struggle with what people want me so to say. You can't out her, her she's <laughs> up there, she's out there. <laughs> That's fine. Then. Hi, um, Kirsty. Hello, Kirsty. Kirsty, I um, it's the lack of code switching when on this, there's quite a lot of people, more than 100 people, and the chat is proper chaotic squirrel ray but within the confines of the conversation and i don't have to explain the stuff that all the time out in the real world i have to apologize i feel i do for my behavior for my thoughts for my tangents nonsense and with this group it's like a shorthand lum and love it so that's that's my week it's been it's been a, a a stressful week that has been helped by james accidentally helping <laughs> accidentally <laughs> yeah 
Oh, so what stupid thing you've been doing instead of what you're supposed to be doing, Sam? Anything? Or just answer, you know, any fucking question? I don't know. Yeah, I probably <laughs> will answer any question. One thing that I did do, actually, and I was recording myself for the extra content when I did this, was I was recording myself naked. I didn't, you, I didn't like, show them everything like I showed you, Alex, like inside my body, basically. Oh, um, God. Oh. <laughs> I know. Sorry to remind you of that. Um, oh, yeah, I should pro actually pe my, people might not know. It was when we were filming the extra content for the podcast that I didn't yeah, realise that me. Alex was on camera. And I went into James's room to get some deodorant, which was on the floor and just bent over right in front of the camera and basically mm. showed Alex my arsehole and Fanny right inside myself. And, but yeah, I was cut off from here. So when I was filming content, I, they couldn't see everything that you've seen, Alex. But um, <laughs> I was talking to the camera and then just, I was, as I do, I, 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 I'm always kind of, I have a tick where I rub the back of my head, but I was rubbing my face this time because I do that a lot. And then I looked in the mirror and I'm like, what is that on my face? And then realized that I'm bleeding at the moment. I um, bleed a lot and I forget that I'm bleeding. So I'd been to the toilet, I'd washed my hands and I'd sat on the toilet lid, obviously without realizing, bled all yeah. over the toilet lid. And then I must have put my hand on the toilet lid as I was getting up and covered my hand in blood. And then as I touched my face, I was like, what is that on my face and then realized it was period blood and I had to just like disinfect the whole toilet and myself mm -hmm. so yeah that was one thing I did that I didn't mean to do I know that wasn't the the question I still haven't found my house keys <laughs> yeah that's the worrying big bunch of house keys yeah it's really worrying I have no idea where they are I took the the car key off them when I took the the car in to be regassed weeks ago and I just haven't found them since don't know where they are i can't remember anything else that i've done to be honest i haven't been noting things down this week what about you alex what, what did you, uh well i don't i don't know i don't know what's what, what to say about that story <laughs> okay have you been doing anything that you shouldn't have been doing or something oh god no well, i haven't I've been working usually, the entire freaking time that this, some of the advice James gave me was about how to reorganise what I've been doing because it's no, I've been doing what I've been supposed to be doing, but I've said yes to. Okay, way what to about you, James? <laughs> yes, I'd just like to say I, I was going to make this point. I was shaking my head while you were talking about the blood story, not because I think there's any shame in a woman bleeding, but again, I feel like it's a bar but me because you're talking about blood as a vampire. And I yeah, think you need to consider fair. the language that you use because I am a marginalised group. There are very few yeah. Colin Robinsons out there. Yeah, who, you are an energy you know, vampire. Oh, there are lots of energy this... vampires out there, believe me. <laughs> there are. Yeah. So what have I been doing this week? The, the, the ADHD, well, whatever the question, the question is. The first one I told you both about this morning. Yeah, I loved this. Uh, dishwashers are quite ADHD things. It turns out lots of people struggle to empty them, etc. And I, this morning when I got up at about four, thought, oh, I'll help Sam keep the house tidy by I'll, I'll empty the dishwasher and then I'll immediately load it with the dirty stuff because she often doesn't like it staying out because we have had ants recently, although they seem to have gone. And I didn't notice for five minutes that I was basically just cycling items in and out of the dishwasher, taking clean stuff out, putting dirty and clean stuff in and then taking it back out and then putting stuff in because I knew some had to come out and some had to go in and wasn't you on your paying attention. Well? doing something no else, no just... not at all no not at all and then eventually when i noticed it was completely empty i thought no hang on some was coming out some was going in and then looked and thought what was i don't know how and then had to vaguely work out the stuff that should have gone in and put it back in it was mad adhd is sometimes it's making simple things look difficult isn't it that's how it feels often it, I, I, it's unbelievable how 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 Thing we yeah. can't do simple things the, yep, the, the other definitely. thing just quickly is i i i impulsively bought i've got so i've got like 10 different types of hair product obviously this this requires you know mechanical support in in <laughs> maintaining its length ding and i bought <laughs> i do i bought no, normally <laughs> i have this I have, I have this really weird thing that when i buy hair support. product I mean, I mean, I use the room bar we've got in the kitchen. <laughs> I 
by hair product, often based on smell, which is a very poor system of selecting the hair product that you use. But I think it doesn't smell nice. Yeah, I'll get that. And I didn't. And I bought hair product that literally, Alex, literally smells like piss. It's it's a hair cream pomade, and it's it smells not just like, like piss, but ammonia. like cat's piss. Yeah, wow. but but like concentrated cat's piss in a pot, and I keep forgetting and then putting it on my hair, and then I and my hands and hair smell a concentrated cat's piss. Wow. Throw it and have away. you been using that on your clothes for years as well? Because that would explain. <laughs> Well, no, that's that's my that's my, that's my actual piss. My natural odor. <laughs> wow. Right, thanks for that both. We're going to take a break and in part two we'll be back with questions and thoughts from the ADHD Adult UK community. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Give me back in one. Welcome back to episode 121 of the ADHD Daddles podcast. Still doing that. Part two. As always, we're taking questions from our brilliant and wonderful ADHD adult community. Bigging up the Discord mainly at the ADHD adults, but also Instagrams and Twitter while it's still a thing. If you haven't exceeded your reading limits of some other silly nonsense billionaire bullshit, as always, taking questions. Are you ready for the first one? Very, very first mm -hmm. one. Yes. It's from yes. the wrong shell. Or shell. I don't know if it's in the original shell. Latin. I did go looking for it, found this article, and wondered what you thought of it. James and Alex, it says, Sam. And the article <laughs> is from Cambridge Research News. It says, imaging study shows dopamine dysfunction is not the main cause of attention deficit hyperactivity. And I think it's really, really interesting and not counterintuitive to us james do you want to sam do you want to tell it first well first of all hi michelle michelle's my official um ear cuff tester <laughs> i really oh, love good. her we all have one um, don't but we? no but i have that you yeah you meet them in person <laughs> yeah actually i've never met her um but um i speak to her a lot um i have no no clue what this is about obviously james um, yeah. Um, so we always, when we talk about it, little talks, presentations, etc., talk about how dopamine is used as shorthand for ADHD. It's the thing that most people think of if you talk about brain chemistry or the brain in ADHD, that it's to do with dopamine. We chase dopamine, etc. It's far, 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 far more nuanced and complicated uh -huh. than that. Far, yes. So dopamine is a neurotransmitter. It's a brain chemical. And there is lots of evidence that some of the genetic mutations found in ADHD, the most common ones are dopamine receptors or transporters to the things dopamine activates and the things that move dopamine around. We know that the reward center of the brain that leads to motivation that allows us to engage with tasks is, is almost all dopamine related and that dopamine doesn't work as well in that area of the brain. But there's two things that I suppose this this study it would have considered it in the study, but as a headline that this doesn't consider, and that is obviously the brain develops differently. It's not just about dopamine action; it's about how the brain develops, so that the connections between different networks of the brain, that CTSC loop, Alex, that we talked about in the Alex oh, yeah, versus yeah, Mrs. That, yeah. <laughs> I hate you. Um, there are yeah, <laughs> there are networks and areas of the brain which don't aren't connected as well that aren't dependent on dopamine and. There are other neurotransmitters with pretty robust evidence bases, bases that they are also involved in ADHD. We know that noradrenaline doesn't work in the same way, that glutamate doesn't work in the same way, that uh, GABA, um, gamma aminobutyric acid, almost got it right, um, doesn't work in, in the same way. And there's over 100 GABA. different neurotransmitter receptors. I, <laughs> I guarantee that there are lots of other neurotransmitters that will not work quite in the same way. So it's kind of, it's, it's always been more than just dopamine. We should really, really point out this important thing that, because we always say, don't we, other neurotransmitters are available. Mm. We take... This dexamphetamine or methylphenidate are similar, which does a job in our brains that that leads to some of the problems of ADHD being helped. That's what the drugs do. They don't cure ADHD. They just help. It's a bit like if your car's broken down because a badger smashes into the radiator and somebody lends you a bike that, that gets to you from A to B, 
that doesn't mean your problem was the bike. It was. It, it doesn't work like that. The, the drugs help with some of the symptoms of ADHD. They don't cure you of ADHD. So by definition, it isn't just a dopamine problem. Of course it isn't. We just, these drugs do things that help. That's it. So I th this it's good. I really love these studies. I think they're great. They're showing us really interesting things. And we all know that ADHD is a multifaceted disorder that starts in, in utero, it's genetic changes in the physical and uh, physiological structure of the brain all this stuff so not a surprise but cool and i'm really glad they're looking at it brilliant question two um after sam just did a little wiggle for I us i really like the dance i love this yeah um question sorry, two, I, you know when you just help. sorry <laughs> it's okay question two Need to which dance. is from helsing on this discard says how dangerous can severe under stimulation for prolonged periods of time Ooh. be i find myself severely under stimulated at work all the time home and social life even my vices of alcohol and smoking cigarettes don't seem to seem to give me any stimulation is this just a normal state we all go through from time to time i'm not sure if feeling burnt out almost every weekend would have an impact on this or not i worry i may start wanting more dangerous things to stimulate me I'm currently on the waiting list. No medication at present. Hope this makes sense. Trying to fight the cat off while typing this. Alex, Sam, either of you, anything? Yeah, I I feel like I get this really affects me. I think that I get really kind of I don't know anxious and and and, and low and, and I just feel so many strong emotions when when this happens to me when that i haven't got enough going on to stimulate me and it makes me just want to not live anymore because i just think i can't be in this constant state where life isn't fulfilling for me and i haven't got enough to kind of um satisfy me that kind of thing it's really awful but yeah i don't i don't know is this can can it be dangerous I don't know the answer to the question is basically what I'm saying, but I can sympathise with what they're saying because I feel that way too. That's somebody okay, so, yeah, it's, it's a really oh. good question. I also want kudos for not doing it. A definite ding then because the subject was too serious for me to do. Well done. Alex. Oh, yeah, good well, well done, well done, And well done for yeah. pointing it out as well. Yeah, it feels <laughs> like a, yeah, a fair point. Could I have credit, please? <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing that i've now done effectively um yeah so firstly i i, I scientist types always do this but it, there's a bit of name your terms here um the author brilliant name helsing is referring to the term under stimulated and it would require a conversation with a mental health professional to understand exactly what you individually mean by that because some people could be recognizing depression or low mood as understimulated. Right. It could be a sign of depression, either because of ADHD, because of circumstances of just unlucky genetic depression. And or it could be what I face almost all the time with my ADHD, just like you, Sam, which is the feeling that I need to do something more to achieve more emotional, short-term emotional reward. That's what my entire existence is. Mm. And and yes not not achieving that m means typically we seek out these uh, in, in my case chemical ways to get it but the, oh, it's not just chemical i would happily gamble i would happily i don't but used to anything really to give me that james loves it when i talk about peaceful wildness it's the thing he likes the most and and it, annoyingly because it is a shit thing to say what, what it actually means is that emotional acceptance that you are someone with a disorder that will never ever go away and that's okay so if all of your life is it doesn't have any comfort zones for adhd brain types which means some level of healthier stimulation it is it, it could lead to some serious physical and mental health problems so yeah talk please please help and communicate that with someone and the real needs maybe if it isn't someone you haven't got anyone in your life um personally who can who will respect your answers your real answers talk to somebody um professional because it, it yes it, it's not the real adhd you and that's and that's quite that can be quite dangerous yes yeah Jim, and what, what I guess, and you'll, yeah you'll oh, probably say more about this james but i guess for both of you you're both kind of substance abusers or were um and that this this is me. gonna 
this <laughs> would lead to that, wouldn't it, when you're looking no, for it... stimulation? Do you want to, you, your James, answer your, what? I can't no, that's words. A... Words? Yeah, words! No. Well, well said, words. Um, yeah, no, there's nothing really to add. We, we, you know, there, there's a theory that lots of problems with ADHD are effectively under stimulation because the, the threshold for what would be yeah. stimulation is, is different. And there is evidence that we handle under stimulation less well. So oh, I God, think I it, it is an awful. issue. Yeah, it, okay, it's, well, it's I've... definitely an issue. Okay, I've got a question. Um, hi, guys. Having very recently been diagnosed with ADHD, I've binged all 84 episodes. Obviously, sorry, <laughs> that threw me. But obviously, this must be a question from when there were 84 episodes. Uh... Obviously, in about a week and a half. And I want to say a giant thank you. Mercilessly taking the piss out of each other is totally my sense of humour. And more than anything else, your podcast has highlighted the funny, funny in rabbit ears side of ADHD, which makes the small daily stroke hourly fuck ups each day feel a lot less serious than they usually appear to in my brain. Side note, it's not supposed to be funny. Whilst all this is new to me, I they didn't put that. I'm finding the whole experience to be really positive and maybe even a little exciting. But I'm a little worried about how I'll get on once I've consumed all the podcasts, stroke audiobooks, stroke YouTube vids, stroke etc. about the subject. Objectively, I know this is oh, this has been and always will be a lifelong thing to deal with. But do you have any advice on how to deal with the disorder once the initial buzz of getting diagnosed, diagnosed and all the penny drop movement moments inevitably wears off? I'm so sorry, Mike. I'm not reading this very well. My my mouth isn't working well today, Ding. I've got another question regarding deliberately being hard on yourself, Ding, in order to try and get a handle on certain symptoms. But as I'm writing this, I'm looking out the window at a pigeon or oh, sitting on a dock or oh, in Finsbury Park. And now I can't get my thoughts in order. Minutes later, still nothing. Thanks so much again, Mike. <laughs> I love that, Mike. I love the end bit. Um, yeah. I would say that this is this is just your journey beginning, actually. I know mm. you're worried that the initial buzz will wear off, but this is just the start of your journey, which you've probably already realised by now. James, anything to add on that? It's just your ADHD is going to change. You, you'll change. You'll always be learning. There'll always be new information. And... It may be that you'll be a you know, weapon of mass consumption at the minute in terms of information, and that may alter as you get to the point that you understand yourself and your ADHD more, but there's always going to be new stuff to learn. Every day is a school day. Mm. Alex? I'm, I'm going to actually give you some advice. I also, because we jumped to the next question, I wanted to ask James if it's ableist to call yourself Helsing in the last letter. Does that hurt your feelings? Because you're a Dracula. <laughs> Um, carry on not, not even answering I'm going to get okay this is my advice it sometimes feel like oh everybody's a coach everyone's a therapist everyone's an ADHD advocate because if you look if you live in the circles and work in the circles we're in and learn about ADHD that's how it looks but it isn't it's still really fucking niche especially adult ADHD so this is my advice Mike if you're at a point where you're thinking you're very up to date and this is your hobby almost because it is it is exciting learning about mental health deal with it by starting to help others with adult adhd that aren't as far along the journey as you are it can mm. either be um it can be you know do, being really in fact big talks like sam's or you could do what james does if you just want to be a tiny brick in a in a wall but if you can figure out what your healthy strengths are, your preferences for how you communicate, you don't have to do what other people do. If you don't like writing long essays, don't fucking write long essays. If you want to get up on stage, go up on stage, unless you're James. If you want to figure out what it is you'd like to do and how you think you could help people, maybe it isn't one-to-one -one for you. Maybe you'd rather work as part of a group. Doing that and helping people with their ADHD, I promise, increases your sense of self-worth. And that is something that we tend to struggle with. That's my advice. I don't normally give it. What do you reckon? I think that was, that was an annoyingly good, actually. Okay, yeah. is well, someone going to move us on? Well, that's it, isn't it? Isn't that the end of the thing? Yeah. The part. Well, yeah. it's in blue. Oh, it's in blue. Sorry, yeah, it's in blue. I, I'm genuinely going to make Sam listen back to this. And she interrupted you. There wasn't even a pause to say somebody are going to move this on. <laughs> it was, there was not even a millisecond. Is somebody going to move it on? 
We're taking a break in part three, as always, thoughts on this week's theme, which was PMDD, PMS and menstrual symptoms. Welcome back to part three of episode 121 of the ADHD adults, 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 adults mm-hmm. podcast. Where we finish off with stuff, it's the shortest part because we're normally um, mentally, uh, no, yes, mentally uh, gone by now. So what made you choose the last idea for a theme, James? Um, well, I'd say probably my deteriorating mental health, James, um, actually made me notice Sam more. The kind of thinking about how much she does for me and how fucking little I do for her. And ironically, I suppose those similarities between bipolar disorders and PMDD in terms of it's a temporal mood issue. It's not that you are kind of dysthymic or depressed all the time. It's that you have these periods. And for me, it's oddly literally. Monthly. Mm, yes. Good. And for Sam, it is you know, yeah, literally monthly. It made me realize I don't support her enough. Um, you know, and making her angst so angry she throws her phone isn't support, it turns out. Um, it's not something that I would recommend as a therapeutic intervention. So yeah, it was really about just trying realizing that I think I need to learn more about it. What about you, Sam? I was saying literally to the periods because she said she has I these know. periods. But, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. um, Are you wondering why we didn't laugh? <laughs> No, no, but he said uh, he said it to something. Oh, God, my, me- my working memory is so shit. I can't remember what I thought he'd responded to, but it doesn't matter. Um, I get this a lot. I get really like, I don't know if it's the autism in me, but it, it's really important to me that the point is addressed that I think I'm not, I'm not explaining this well. No, because it's reward. I, I, yeah, it's like an itch you have to scratch. That is ADHD and everything. autism. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. So um, I don't know if I've got anything else to add uh, um, on top of what I added before, which was basically track your symptoms so that it helps you and helps others. If you feel safe and able to do so, share this with people and, you know, overshare to the point that it makes people feel fucking uncomfortable. So they want to crawl up their own arseholes, but it gets people talking about it um, if you feel safe and able to do so. And um yeah, you might want to speak to a medical professional if it's getting that bad for you. But I think the point that James made about kind of being aware of it and being able then to prepare for it so that you can get through it is a good one. What about you, Alex? Mm. Oh, I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> well, asked... Jay, well, Sam, what I struggle with is paying attention to the question asked. I think my my, my biggest weakness probably not listening properly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I have no editorial rights on this podcast. What about you, Alex? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. This is amazing. Sure, right, Sam. We'll edit that in post. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's good. I wanted to say uh, molimina because it's a great word, and I've never like said it out loud. Word. It might be mol- molimina or anything. Um, I. Also, take issue with James saying, I don't do anything for Sam. James looks after both of us all the time. I know, <laughs> yeah, he literally. He's like my my father and my husband rolled into yeah. one. Ding. I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Yeah, you're, you're dead dad, James. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And, uh, remind me why we had to separate the podcast from the charity. I forgot. Yeah, I have uh, legal, legal uh, red tape, I believe. My lovely wife also has no filter for politically correctness. Well, I mean, jokes that hurt me. For everybody else, she's incredibly lovely. And because I have cyclothymia, I'm in really low mood occasionally. And, it, and when my wife realised it happened for two or three days, approximately once a month, you would not imagine the glee on her face with how she related that to... Essentially, she's saying, I have PMS. That's what she did. And she knows she did. And I just have to accept that joke. That, that's why that isn't relevant. It just made me laugh when she did it. She's a nightmare. <laughs> Sam, was there any thought or tip from the theme that you forgot to say? Oh, I'm looking forward, any... to, looking forward to this. Yeah. To be honest, anything? I don't think I've got anything to add. What about you, James? Yeah, I think we've covered it. Men, advocate. <laughs> Healthcare system, sort yourself out. Women. <laughs> Sorry to say this track and persist sometimes because that's the system we've got. It's awful, really, isn't it? Yeah, Thanks. it is. I think 
how does it feel, Sam? For how, how what's the because obviously I can't, <laughs> I can't give tips. How is it for women thing in terms of communicating and advocating and, and grouping as women to change this? It, it's structurally there are structural barriers, aren't there, in place for that? Massive, what's the best actually. Way? What's the next step? It's really difficult because it's it, it's. I was going to say it's almost like, but I think it probably is exactly like um, society's been engineered in that we are ashamed to even say, like it's 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 nothing. It's something that you're supposed to just fucking get on with and deal with, and you're supposed to pretend that like you're not in pain emotionally and physically every month, and you can't. If you go to your line manager and say I'm really struggling this month because I've got PMS, that is frowned upon by other women not just men it's it's mm. something that it's we're kind of engineered to just suck it up and get on with you know a tampon ad advert you know you can just go on about your life it's all fine as long yeah. as you've got a tampon i don't fucking think so mate it's 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 really really difficult because it's one of those things that i think um is is frowned upon if you go to your line manager and say i'm struggling because I'm in pain and I've got a heavy period. It's getting better, I think, but I think it is something that's frowned upon. So it does take bravery or just not caring or I don't know. It it you have to put yourself on out on a limb and appreciate that you you may be talked about and it may be frowned upon for you to say that you are struggling with your monthly period because I think it's something that in society we're just told you should just get on with because all women have it and and I think it is almost from other women that it's looked down upon more like it's just a period because if they don't struggle the way you do they think that everybody is like them just the way that people with ADHD think that ADHD as a whole is like their ADHD not all women struggle we all struggle differently and I think it can be hard for some women to appreciate how much other women struggle sometimes. And they just think that they're a weak person. You're not a weak person. If you struggle, you struggle. And it that's that's it. And you need to get help. Sorry. That was very good. It was very good. I remember my wife telling me at school, she had, she had crippling period cramps. And I was like, well, why didn't you go home? She said, oh, well, you, you couldn't. You can't. You yeah. can't. Yeah. And I, it, it there have been me. when with my endometriosis it's, it's so painful and so awful but I was too embarrassed for so long and I even got took down a disciplinary route for my sickness because I wasn't telling them the real reason because I was wow. too embarrassed so I would wow. make up different illnesses but they were happening the same time every month which then got picked up as a pattern and I nearly got fired because of it when I worked in the prison what they thought yeah. you were like oh she must have a separate job every Friday last Friday I of the month, yeah I don't know what they thought and then eventually when I even disclosed it actually I was still taken through disciplinary actions I had to then to get a note from the doctor to say that it could be disabling because they just didn't even after I'd had it like anyway that doesn't matter I'm going off on a whole thing but yeah it can be difficult because we ourselves kind of self-regulate because we're too embarrassed to talk about it and then even when you do pluck up the courage to talk about it it's not always taken well by institutions i think looking up i haven't got anything else to add in the dictionary might be a job for this <laughs> <issue>. <laughs> <laughs> that was our episode 121 of the adhd adults and it was a, probably the fifth thursday that's now a friday i don't know of the ADHD Adults podcast after Monday's episode on PMDD. If you like this nonsense and want to get involved, do please contact us on any of the socials, even Twitter while it's still a thing, at the ADHD Adults on Discord, Instagrams, Facebook, Twitter, those pigeons that Sam likes, and everything else. Have a lovely weekend from the ADHD Adults. Goodbyes. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh yeah, did you see that the, in chat? Did you see in chat? <laughs> yes, yes. I